Among the snow-capped mountains and fertile plains of Alaska lies the largest tract of public land in the United States. The rich, wild diversity of this place makes it the biological backbone of America's Arctic and a true national treasure. Here, an intact ecosystem has thrived for tens of thousands of years. The windswept terrain is home to animals and people that rely on the climate and landscape of America's Arctic to survive. Ironically, this magnificent area is named not for the beauty of what is seen, but for what cannot be seen. A deep vein of petroleum rolling far beneath the surface of the land and the ocean. This is the National Petroleum Reserve, Alaska and it is at the center of a critical debate over the preservation of the region. What will happen if oil and mineral development is allowed to move forward unfettered? Can the birds, caribou, bears, and people that depend on the reserve's lands and waters survive? look out and see the white vast area, see the quietness of what's out there. The air is still very cold, but there's a crispness to the air and then the animals start to come in. Uh, you might see a caribou in the distance that recognizes you. You might come across tracks of the foxes. Uh, you see that animal as a part of the environment that you're living on. A jewel of the Arctic the reserve shines with pristine beauty. Unlike any other place in our country, it is held apart by towering mountains, lush valleys, sparkling waters, and the crisp Alaskan climate. The sheer scope of the reserve is truly impressive. It fills the upper northwest corner of Alaska, stretching from the Brooks Mountain Range hundreds of miles north to the Arctic Ocean. At 23 and a half million acres, its majestic landscape makes up an area roughly the size of Indiana. Inside its borders, hundreds of species of animals and plants flourish. Some, like the caribou, are specially adapted to live in the Arctic landscape year-round. Other animals are temporary residents. Birds, such as the hawk, migrate from six continents to nest and breed in the reserve during the warmer summer months. Six areas of the reserve are considered so important to the ecosystem of America's Arctic that they have been designated as priority conservation areas with particularly outstanding wildlife resources. This includes fragile wilderness lands like Teshekpuk Lake, where birds from each of the lower 48 states migrate each year. It is critical for the health and welfare of the entire region that these places remain undisturbed by resource exploration and development threats. No one understands the importance of these areas more than the Alaska Native people who have lived off the bounty of the reserve's lands and waters for centuries. They still follow a subsistence way of life where the land, waters, and wildlife sustain their lifestyle. The subsistence lifestyle is a really strong spiritual connectedness to the lands and ocean. We hunt the caribou uh, that migrate through. We have uh, all three herds migrate around our community. We have close proximity to the ocean, so we can use our traditional foods from the ocean, the walrus, the seal, the whale. Ninety percent of our food comes from the ocean, and they migrate right through here and up and up north. And then they come back, too. And, you know, that's how we survived here for thousands of years. You know, the animals have always been the center of our lives. For thousands of years, the land has remained undisturbed, a protected home for the Alaska Native people and a biological haven for wildlife. 
Today, the health of the reserve is in jeopardy. Global warming has hit the Arctic harder than anywhere else in the world, and the impacts are being felt throughout the region's fragile ecosystem. This threat is compounded by our society's ongoing thirst for fossil fuels. More than 11 million acres in the reserve, as well as vast areas of the adjoining Arctic Ocean, have been opened for oil and gas development. The mining of coal and other minerals is also a possibility. At the center of this issue are the Alaska Native people, who have lived with the massive oil development that has already taken place on Alaska's North Slope. These people understand the impact that future development would have on this unique, fragile ecosystem. It's greatly changed now with uh, the production of oil and gas. There's structures of massive quantity of gravel placement with men uh, and equipment and generators. So the animals that used to come in and forage in these areas are now coming into areas where there's hundreds of people, hundreds of uh, vehicles running around. Uh, the animals don't use the area the same as they used to. Everybody knows that protecting the environment is key to our way of life. Anything dealing with the animals affecting their migratory routes is a big issue and a big worry, big concern for a lot of us here. We don't want that uh, seismic testing out there. It's going to scare the animals away. Since oil development began on Alaska's North Slope more than 40 years ago, the oil industry has had a dismal track record. Each year, on average, there are more than 500 oil spills, which is more than one per day. Current drilling operations release more than 70,000 tons of nitrous oxide annually, contributing to smog and acid rain. There are tons and tons of emissions of particulate matter associated with their development activities. With the nearshore, offshore development, if there is a spill, those are our resources, those are our waters, and they won't be impacted just for a little bit of time. They're going to be impacted for the generations to come. And I don't take that risk lightly. We see this hunger for oil. What are they going to do to us if they have a major oil spill and all the animals are gone? They migrate in a certain route, you know, what's going to happen? We don't want to take that chance. I have a two-year-old son and I worry it's always lingering in the back of my mind if, if he's going to have the same opportunities. Is the oil industry going to mess that up for him? Climate change going to mess it up for him? You know, it's very important that they know who and what we are, that we care about the area that we live in, that we depend on feeding our whole community with the resources that are here. Because sooner or later, those oil wells will dry up, but will we still feed our families from the ocean? where we still feed our families from the caribou off the land. As the largest area of unprotected public land in the country, the reserve belongs to all of us. It is important that we work to preserve the reserve so that this national treasure will survive for generations to come.